Hi, everybody. Reese Davis with you, bringing you the EA Sports NCAA Football 14 pregame show presented by Nissan. Innovation that excites. This is an example of what happens when you move your stadium on campus. A live look at Bright House Network Stadium in Orlando. Both teams on the field, warm-ups wrapping up, just about set to go from Orlando. We've done all we can do here. Time to tee it up. Let's send it out to Brad and Kirk for the call. David and I will be with you at halftime. it out to about the 27 yard line. Now the offense gets ready to take their first crack at it. Second down now, and they need about four yards to pick up the first. Gets out to around the 45. If you can consistently run effectively like this, it'll force the defense to pay more attention to the run, and that creates chances in the play action passing game. statistically. It's first and ten. Ball on the 25. Makes the catch and he might take it. He's pushed out of bounds at the 12-yard line. Wide receiver's role in a play-action pass is to get into position and to hit his spot in timing and rhythm with the quarterback. And that's exactly what they were able to do on this last play. You realize you've got a little bit more time because of the play-action, and it gives you more time to get to that point that the quarterback's looking for you to be at. So make sure you do a good job of selling your route and getting in position to give an open target to the quarterback. Second and 10. Ball on the 12. Freeman on a pitch out. They'll wrestle him down in the backfield. The defense was able to get really good penetration and drop him short of the line of scrimmage. Make 
We're at play number nine of this current drive. Zips it to the back. The five. Touchdown, UCF. And he adds the extra point. A nine-play, 74-yard drive. And they add seven points to the scoreboard. Brad, I thought that was a textbook drive. I thought they did a really good job of showing balance, mixing the play calling with the run and the pass. Just an overall well-executed touchdown. Central Florida to kick. He's to the 20. Gets to about the 27-yard line. Neal's overall ability, Herbie, has got to drive you crazy if you're a defensive coach. Yeah, you look at a defensive coordinator trying to slow this guy down, it's next to impossible. He can do so many different things, and today they're going to try to put pressure on him because if you sit back, he, can, he just makes too many things happen. Here he goes. Nice run to the outside. Second down, and they're going to need about three yards to pick up the first down. He is such a reliable target. You throw it anywhere near him, and this guy's going to get his hands on it and make a catch. It's about four yards on the play. That makes it second and six. Second and six. Ball on the 49. He's at the 40, and he's taken down at the 35-yard line. Maybe after a nice run like that, you try to go up in the air for the play-action pass. game. Yates picks up about seven yards on the run. That'll bring up second and three. They need about three yards to get the first here on second down. That's a great tackle at the 20-yard line. First down. Defense. You know, this offense just can't afford to be getting hit with the turnover bug. They need to hold on to the football. You know, the last time we saw this offense on the field, they drove the length of the field. And you think back to what that defensive coordinator tried to do. He tried to change some things up, but nothing seemed to work. It's going to be interesting to see how he can have an impact on this drive. So after some discussion, the call on the field is reversed. They'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. From the 18-yard line, third down. Quickly incomplete. Overthrew his man, but boy, did he have some heat on him. He just needs to put a little bit more touch on that pass. Kick 
kicks up, and the field goal is good. Brooks has his kick team lined up, and he is set to kick this one off. He's to the 20. He makes it to the 25-yard line. A long way yet to go, but at the end of one, the Knights lead it by four. And we welcome you back to the action here, and we have got a tight one going on in quarter number two. In a game that's this close, you can't afford to waste possessions. Central Florida is up by four. Gives it to the back. Brought down around the 26-yard line. King picks up a yard on the play. Woo! I think everybody in the stadium felt that hit. He really laid some lumber there. Second down and nine to go. Ball on their own 26. He's taken down at the 45. That was a nice catch. He went up leaving his body susceptible to the hit, but he came down with it and got a first down. First down, 10 to go. Ball on the 45. He's at the 40. And he shoved out of bounds at the 31-yard line. It's great when a running attack comes through for the first down like this. It makes an offense so much more versatile. the 29 yard line that makes it second and eight second down eight yards to go ball on the 29 yard line looks for his tight end over the middle boy when you can rely on your tight end to move the chains you got a big time advantage over any defense Central Florida holds a four-point lead. He gets out to about the 12-yard line. That'll make it second and seven. Second down and seven. Ball on the 12-yard line. Tries to get around the corner. Good outside run there. King gets six yards on the carry. And this play is number eight on the drive. And he almost has the INT. They'll line up for the field goal, and this is nothing more than a chip shot. The kick is up, and it is good. And you got to think they're pretty happy with holding them to a field goal right there. Everyone's all lined up and ready for the kickoff. Davis from the seven. And down he goes to the 36-yard line. With one quarter down, I really haven't seen too much separation between these two squads. Might be neck and neck the whole way. Nice run up the middle. That brings them second and five. From their own 41 yard line, second down. And he just 
gets rid of it. Good job here by the defense. If you let this quarterback set and throw, he'll kill you all game. But they got excellent pressure on that play. Pulls it in, and he's in the open field. Tackle made at the 40-yard line. That makes it first and 10. First down, 10 yards to go. Ball on the 40. Play fake and looking to run. Loose football. They fall on it. And that's exactly what this defense was looking for. Yeah, that fumble gives these guys some added luck. Now let's see if they can capitalize off of it. swings have been fairly even and with so little separation this game can be drastically changed on just one or two plays central florida is up by a touchdown they'll get him for a loss did you see how that big defensive line got such a good push on that play that's exactly why they were able to stop him for a loss from their own 38 yard line second down Gets it. He's in space. Knocked out of bounds. Round the 47 yard line. That makes it third and three. a nice gain and a first down. He's really a good-looking ball carrier. We've got a first and ten. Ball on the 45. He's hit and taken down. two-yard line. It's second down. Looks left, finding his tailback, and he's tackled right around the 34. Loss of about two. Pretty good stand there. They weren't fooled at all by the offensive play call. Central Florida is up a score. Looks for his running back, incomplete. Can be intended to see him on the play. Jack, 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 Thunder! Thunder! Crash, crash! In a perfect world, he knocks this kick down inside the 10. <laughs> this one will go into the end zone, and they'll bring it out to the 20. The Bulls have really got some work to do, I think, Kirk, in the second half, because from what we've seen from their quarterback so far, if he's their star, it's not shining right now, and they got to find somebody else to light up the sky a little bit. Well, I think collectively, as a head coach, an offensive coordinator, quarterback coach, they're all going to have to get together and take some time to visit with this quarterback at halftime and try to find out if they can somehow get him going. And the other thing to think about is maybe it's the running backs. Maybe it's this is their week to take some of the pressure off him. Maybe the receivers, the offensive line. When your star isn't playing up to his abilities, he has a tendency to press. Somebody else has to step up their game and take some of the pressure off him. From their own 24-yard line, it's second down. Fires out 
quickly to the tailback. And he is drilled at the 31. The pass is complete for seven yards, and that'll be a first down. Nice protection, a good pass, and even a better catch. He can ask for much more than that. When you've got a quarterback making throws that quickly, the defense doesn't have a lot of time to react to the play. He wants it all going long. Doesn't get there. So at the end of the half, UCF in front, 10-3. Reese David, thanks guys. Just about set to start the third quarter. Henley fields it at the seven. The Knights continue to get it done on the defensive side of the football curve. Yeah, they've done a good job of building this lead and almost determined here to protect it. Let's see if they can hold on here for the rest of the way. This deficit can be easily overcome, sure. But they have to be thinking if they don't get something going on this series, the burden is going to be felt by their defense. And he's level at the 25-yard line. That makes it second and eight. From their own 25-yard line, second down. He gets out to about the 37-yard line. First down. Passes it to the middle of the field, and down he goes at the 49. That makes it first and ten. It's first and ten. Ball on their own 49. Third down now, and they need to get it inside the 41. doesn't want to let the punt returner have a chance here. He just wants to change field position. Fielded at the 19. Tackle at the 28. Flag down, and I'm not sure when it was thrown. Let's find out. Clipping. Receiving team. That's frustrating for a coach when you preach fundamentals every week and then have someone called for clipping. That penalty really is going to set them back. They line up at the 14. First down. Central Florida is up seven. He gets to about the 24-yard line. Second down.
Jr. makes the catch. He's pushed out of bounds at about the 47-yard line. First and 10. Ball on the 47-yard line. And they'll run him again. And he makes it out to about the 47-yard line. That makes it second and 10. got some pressure and forced a bad pass. I think they've been a little bit more aggressive here with their pass rush, and that time it paid off with an incompletion. Third down now, and they need to get it down to the 37. Central Florida, up seven points. Gets rid of it quickly, and that was almost picked. Davis is intended to see the other way. That'll make it fourth and ten. Trying to change the field position with his kick. He fields the punt at the 13. And he makes it out to about the 24-yard line. There's still plenty of time to keep running their offense as usual here. I don't think they need to feel any anxiety about trailing. Bring him down at the 41-yard line. That's a team 17. First and down. From their own 41-yard line. First down. There's some daylight. He's at midfield. Makes it out to about the 49. That makes it first and 10. Two times, two times. And they get nice yardage on that run. That's a team of six on the way. That'll make it second and four. So it's second down now, and they need about four yards to pick up the first. There's the strike complete, and they push him out at about the 25-yard line. First down. First and 10, ball on the 25-yard line. Caught with room to work. Brought down at the 11. Call it a gain of 14 yards. First down. A great game so far, and it looks like it'll be decided in the fourth. The Knights with a touchdown lead. Back in this very pivotal fourth quarter. Second down. Just throws this one away. Here's the eighth play of the series.
incomplete. Brought down, nothing doing. And for Clark, he set a new school record for receiving yards in a season. When was the last time we saw somebody get downfield the way this guy does? And it isn't just a speed thing. He's simply an exceptional runner. So they're going to go for it here. Strike to the receiver, touchdown. And did that play ever develop nicely? Well, it's all about the receiver on this play. He beat his man off the line and then ran a perfect route. All he had to do after that was make the catch. They rolled the dice and went for it on fourth, and I'm sure they're happy with the result. Here's the PAT to tie this thing up. And he converts the extra point. A nine-play, 76-yard drive, and it results in a touchdown. Looks like they're ready for the kick. Fielded at the nine. And he makes it out to about the 27-yard line. We might have overtime in the back of our minds, but down on the field, that hasn't occurred to anyone. They want to end this thing in regulation. You know, Brad, the defensive coordinator does a nice job with the coverage call here. Everybody's in position to be able to make the play. The only problem is they didn't intercept the football. That's something that uh, they got to be happy with the coverage, but not happy with the result. Third and ten coming up. Ball on the 27. Here we go. Catches it and hit immediately for a loss. Nothing doing for the offense, and it's fourth down. Ross awaits the snap. And he's tackled at the 49. And you know, it's basically like we're starting from zero here in a one-quarter game now. Every possession is vital. it to the 41. That's a game of eight on the ball. That brings up second and nine. It's second down now, and they're just a few feet away from that first down marker. He steps up, and they bring him down for a sack on the play. A great defensive end in, in college football just pins his ears back and has it done. That extra instinct to know when to jump the snap count, when to take a chance on third down. And it seems like they almost save their extra pass rush and extra incentive as far as their, their energy when it really matters on a third down, when they feel like they can beat that offensive tackle and get off the line of scrimmage a little bit quicker. And that's something that I think we've seen him do throughout this game. He's tackled right around the 36-yard line. That makes it first and ten. First down, ten to go. Ball on the 36. Just under three to go in regulation. Throws it in a hurry. And he's taken down right around the 26-yard line. That brings up second and one. He scrambled. 
decides to slide. It's always a snap decision when you decide to tuck it and run. On that play, it was definitely the right move as he got the first down after a nice game. First down, 10 yards to go. Ball on the 12. Tackle at the one. This is the kind of steady, strong drive the coaches love to see. Right now, they're firing on all cylinders. Defense in their short yardage package. Pitch out. Touchdown, Bulls. Tacks on the extra point. A seven-play, 49-yard drive, and they come away with a touchdown. So our score, 17-10. Brooks is lined up to kick this one off. From the eight-yard line, he makes it out to maybe the 30-yard line. Both teams realize that when the ball is snapped, we're one play away from a very different ball game. Just over a minute in the fourth quarter. He gets sacked on the play. He's to the 40. He's taken down at the 44-yard line. The Knights will use their first time out of the half. We've got a first and 10. Ball on the 44. Fires out to his wideout. And he's tackled right around the 32-yard line. Good job by the offensive line to pick up the linebacker on the blitz. That gave the quarterback enough time to find his man for a nice game. Open man, quick strike, and he can't pull it in. From the 32-yard line, second down. Incomplete intended for his wideouts. And he might want it all here and does. This could be it, fellas. It's fourth down. stop here late in the fourth quarter and that should be the nail in the coffin in this game it's always a gamble going for it with so many yards to come up with but when you're behind sometimes you have to take risks to get back into a ball game you know this is a real crucial time in the game it could still go either way we should just see the quarterback take a knee right here, winding down the rest of this clock. Takes a knee, Central Florida. We'll take their last time out. South Florida is up by a touchdown. And he'll just take a knee here to kill the clock. This one's all but wrapped up with the final score, 17-10, Bulls.
Kirk, go ahead and just give us your reflections on this game. South Florida came out here today and played with the heart and intensity that you love to see in a rivalry game. They should be very proud of their victory because wins don't come easy between these two teams. Thanks for joining us for another game of NCAA Football 14. For Kirk and everyone here at EA Sports, Brad Nussler saying goodbye, and we'll see you next time.